Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to show you how to make these Baked With Love gift tags with your Cricut. Let's get started. The first thing you need to do before we begin this project is go to my website and download the SVG. I have a link to it in the description below this video and you will find an SVG file. If you need help navigating through the website and how to download a file, stay tuned to the end of the video and I will walk you through it. But for those of you that already know how to do that, go ahead and grab that file and then meet me back here and we will start this project. So once you have the file, the first thing you're going to do is click new project. You're going to click upload on the left hand menu. We're going to click upload image. You're going to click browse and you're going to navigate to where you downloaded that file. You want the one that ends in SVG. If it says ZIP, you need to double click it and open it and then get the SVG file. We're going to click open. Here you can see a preview of what the tags look like. There are two different tags. So I encourage you to use this tag box. What this does is help you find the files down the road. If you, a week from now, a year from now, next fall, you want to find these tags, then you can put keywords in here and that will help you find them. So anything that you think you might look it up by down the road when you're searching for baked with love tags or made with love tags or handmade tags, those are all keywords that you could put in the search bar and Design Space will know this is what you're looking for. So I'm gonna put, handmade tags, tag, gift tag. I always put the author of the file because sometimes I remember who made it. Um, you might wanna put bread tag, baked, anything that you might search for it later. Made with love. So just separate them by a comma and a space and you can put as many tags as you want. And then you're going to click save. Once you click save, you're just going to click on it. It's gonna be the first one right here in your recently uploaded images. Click insert image. All right, so you can see we've got two different styles of tags and I have provided them all in separate layers so that if you want to modify this in any way, you can. You can change the colors of the text. You could change the color of the tag. You can remove the stitch lines. You could change zucchini bread to chocolate chip cookies, whatever you wanted to change it to. I left it in separate layers so that you could modify this and make it your own. You'll also notice over here in the layers panel that everything is a cut file. We're going to be doing print and cut, so we need to make some modifications. Now, if you noticed on my tags, I printed them on craft paper. So I am going to leave my tags white because I'm going to print them on colored cardstock. But if you wanted colored tags, you could go ahead and make those modifications now. So I could click this tag, for instance, if I wanted to print a pink tag on white paper, I could click this tag right here, go up to my color palette, change it to pink. And now when we change this to a print and cut image, it's going to print a pink tag. But I am going to be printing on colored cardstock, so I'm going to leave it white. Printers can't print white. So when they see white, printers just don't print anything. So if I'm printing on a brown paper, it's going to make a brown tag with the black writing. That's what I want. So I'm going to change this to white. I wanna leave it white. So again, if you want to change this and you want to, let's say you wanna change zucchini bread to pumpkin bread, you can just turn this layer off and Add text, say you wanted to say pumpkin cookies. You could do that, resize it, and you could change that to pumpkin cookies. All right, so I just wanted to show you why I left it all in different layers because I want you to be able to make this your own. So all I did was click undo there to change it. So let's take a look at our layers panel. Whenever you upload a image into Cricut Design Space, it always comes in under one group. Meaning if I select this tag, look what happens. They're both selected. 
So what I want to do now is ungroup this because I want to deal with these tags individually. So what I'm going to do is right click and click ungroup. You can also use the ungroup button right here. They do the same thing. Design Space has multiple ways to do many of the same functions. There's not a right and a wrong way. I'm a right click kind of girl. I just think it's easier and I'm used to it. So I'm going to right click and ungroup and watch the layers panel and what happens. So now you see we have a stack of the baked tags. We have another stack of the other baked tag and I click on one and I only get one. Click on the other one and I only have the other one. So now we've got those ungrouped. The next thing I'm going to do is select each tag. You can see this one's the one that's selected. These are highlighted in gray and we're going to do what's called flattening. What flattening does is tell Design Space, I want you to print then cut this. I'm not going to cut each layer out. I don't want you to cut the word love out. I don't want you to cut made with out. I don't want you to cut these little stitches out, although that could be cute. I just want you to print then cut this tag and I want you to cut the outer edge. So that's when you use flatten. You will only ever use flatten if you're doing print then cut. So I'm going to select just this tag, right click and click flatten. And now this is a one layer tag. Do you see that? All those layers are now just one layer. If I turn this one layer off, the whole tag's gone. So this tells Design Space, this is what I want. I want one piece of paper with made with love on it and I want you to cut around this outer edge. All right, so let's do the same with this tag. And I'm doing these separately so that we can duplicate them as needed. You could select them both and click flatten, but then it's going to keep them grouped together. I wanna keep them separate. So we're gonna select the other one, right click, flatten. You only use flatten when you're going to print and cut. And now look, we have two layers. All right, so let's just set these aside a little bit. When you print and cut, it's often you're using a sticker paper, a cardstock, something that you don't want to waste. And in order to get the biggest amount of use out of your paper so that you're not wasting it, you need to know that the biggest area that you can print and cut is 6.75 by 9.25 inches. So what I like to do is click shapes, click the square, Now this square is a square. So if I were to try to resize it, it's going to stay a square no matter what size I make it. I want to be able to move this width and the height independently. So what I'm going to do is click this little lock button and it's going to unlock it. And remember I said Cricut Design Space often has more than one way to do something. You can also click this lock right up here in between the width and the height. It does the exact same thing. See if I click it, this goes back to lock. Click it again, it's unlocked. They do the same thing. So we want it unlocked. With the lock in the unlock position, we're going to change that width to 6.75, which is the widest that you can print and cut. And we're going to tab over to the height. And we're going to change that to 9.25, which is the tallest that you can print and cut. So this is going to represent our paper. I am going to print mine on craft cardstock. So I'm going to change my paper to a brown and let's click on advance and get a little bit lighter just so it's easier for you guys to see. I'm going to represent my craft paper. Now, as we know, a printer does not print white ink. So the fact that these tags are white and I'm putting it on a brown paper Design Space is just going to basically print the words. It's not even going to print any color, which is what I want. It's going to be a brown tag. If you wanted a white tag, you would just print it on white paper, right? If you wanted a pink tag, remember at the beginning of the video, I showed you how to make the tag pink and you would put it on white paper. So hopefully that makes sense. So our tag, if you notice here, it's going behind the paper. So I'm going to right click and put center front. So now my tag is right here. 
and I'm just using this square as a example of how many tags I could get on one piece of paper. So let's bring this one over and it's also behind. So we'll right click, send to front, and I can get that one here. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this tag. So duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. And let me see how many of these I can get on this piece of paper because we know that this is as big as Print and Cut's going to let me do. All right, so maybe I could put one there. And then I'm gonna grab this tag and duplicate that a few times. And you can do this as much or as little as you want. If you don't care about wasting paper or having blank spaces, you don't need to. You can just print whatever you need. You probably don't need this many tags if you're making baked goods. But I just wanted to show you, whenever you print and cut, this is the way to get the most real estate out of your project. So you could manipulate these any way you want as long as they're within the boundaries of that box. Okay, so what would happen if we hit make it right now? Well, let's just look. All right, it sees that I've got a page full of tags. That's nothing like I put them. It's put it on, we know that those can fit on one page, but it's put it on two and it's got my paper. I don't need to print my paper. So let's hit cancel. So whenever you want something to stay exactly the way that you arranged it, we want these tags to stay just like this because we know that this will fit on one sheet of print and cut. So what we're going to do is remove this paper. We don't need to print the paper at all. That was just a guideline. So we're gonna remove that paper and just delete it. Now we're going to select all those tags right where they were. We're going to right click and we're going to click attach. And we're telling Design Space, these are all attached. Don't move them around because I know that I can use one sheet of print and cut even though you want me to use two. So let's, let's see what happens when we click make it. Aha, one sheet full of labels arranged exactly the way we had them, exactly what we want. What you're going to do from here is click continue. So now we're going to send it to our printer. So we click send to printer. You get some options here. I'm going to be using my Canon. I'm going to use just one copy. If you wanted to make multiple copies, you could change that here. Add bleed. You can leave the bleed on. What bleed does is if you have ink that goes all the way to the edge of your image, which we don't in this particular case, but if you have ink that goes all the way to the edge of your image, it will add a little bit of extra ink around the edges so that you get edge to edge color. The next thing that you're going to do is very important. You're going to use a system dialog. This is going to give you your best print options. So I'm gonna click that on and then read this. I see this posted so many times in the Facebook group. It says, after clicking print, your print dialog may appear behind your design space application. Watch, let's click print. And this is what I see so many people complaining. I click print and cut and it just spins and spins and spins and nothing's happening. Let's minimize our design space window for a second. Here's our print dialog. So what I always do, and again, I'm using my Canon G7000. I love this printer. I'm going to choose feed from the rear tray. I'm going to tell it that I am using, um, I'm gonna tell it it's photo paper, even though it's not, and I'm gonna put my qual quality on best always. So I'm going to go ahead and print this out. So this is my Canon printer. I love this printer because it has this rear feed. Whenever you're trying to feed something like cardstock, and I'm using Cricut cardstock, by the way, just the textured cardstock, but cardstock, labels, anything like that, it's, in my opinion, best to have a printer with a feed that feeds the paper straight through rather than trying to lift it up. Often printers can't lift up that heavier cardstock paper. Now, what I like about this printer is it has these ink tanks. So the ink lasts for a very long time. You can see the black ink on the left and the colors on the right. And it's just a really great workhorse. I'll have it linked in the description below the video if you're interested, but I really enjoy this printer. And as you can see, it has no problem printing on this cardstock. So let me finish up printing and then I'll meet you at the machine and we'll take it from there. Okay, so I've loaded it on a blue mat. You could use a blue mat or a green mat. Make sure it's in that upper left corner. I'm going to press enter. Once we have the blinking C, you're going to go ahead and press that.
first thing that's going to happen is the Cricut is looking for this registration mark. Keep in mind, if you're using a Cricut Explorer, you may not have very good luck using colored cardstock. It works best on white with a Cricut Explorer, but with the Cricut Maker, you can use colored cardstock. So you can see the Cricut is working its way all the way around this border, just double checking where exactly this paper is on the mat so that it knows where to cut precisely. We're gonna have a slight pause and now it's going to start cutting. Now that our print is finished, we can go ahead and check it, make sure that everything cut, it did. So we can go ahead and eject it. If you checked it and it wasn't cut out well, you could just hit the C again without releasing the mat from the machine and it would recut it in the exact same spot. But we look good, so we're gonna pull it off. And I just want to show you how well it cuts out these tags. And keep in mind, this is colored cardstock. So perfectly cut out. There's my circles, and here's the smaller tags. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of how to make a tag with your Cricut Maker or your Cricut Explorer. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Click that bell so that you're notified every time there is a new video. If you need help downloading the file, stay tuned. I will run you through it really quickly. So the first thing you're going to do to get the file is go to lorinunamaker.com. Click on the shop. Scroll down until you see free PDF and SVG patterns and click on that thumbnail. Here you'll find a picture of the tags that we just made. Click download now. I'm on a Mac and mine drops it right here in this lower corner. You may have to go to your downloads folder. All I do is click on the arrow, click open. Now it has opened that file and it's an SVG. If you go to your downloads folder and it looks like this and it says .zip, all you're going to do is double click it and then it will open up a file ending in SVG. That is the file that you're going to use for Cricut Design Space. And all I do is take that file once I see the SVG and I drag it to my desktop. And then you can pick up on the video where we started.